So it is my great honor and privilege to introduce you to a woman that you don't need an introduction to, but I still get to do it. Um, the, as I said, the hardest working woman who you know is on your side. She fights for you every day. I am so proud to call her my friend. Teddy was proud to call her his friend. He was proud to fight for her, to support her, to campaign with her, as am I. You know, in life, you have certain peak experiences. <laughs> and this is one of them. I'm a lower <laughs> Vicki, thank you. Thank you for coming here, for being my friend, for supporting me. Um, thank you for all that you do for so many of us in elected office, uh, both out in front and behind the scenes, to support us and to help make us better representatives. I'm uh, truly grateful to you for all of that as well as, as being here today. Thank you. And of course to the McNulty family. I cannot thank you enough for opening up Back in 2004, when the hope of being your state representative was just a little glimmer in my eye, we, um, we had a, a wonderful event up at the top of the pot that year as well. I still have the photos on my wall of, of my office, but I think that the McNulty's have really outdone themselves this year, and all of you have helped make this an outstanding occasion, so thank you. Thank you. And of course, going back to Vicki for a moment, I will always be indebted to her, as should everybody who lives in Provincetown, because we were on the campaign trail together for Martha Copley. We were in Plymouth on a particular morning, and the Senate president had just gotten up and talked about Plymouth and the Pilgrims. And you know how that story goes over in Plymouth. Well, Vicki is the next to get on the speaking, uh, up on the dais to speak. And she says, well, just, just before I continue, I do want to correct something that the Senate President has said. Something that Teddy and I are very uh, aware of and always made a point about, and that is that Provincetown is the first lady. <laughs> Boy, am I proud to represent this district. And, you know, you can't drive from here to Harwich without seeing Senator Kennedy's and Bill Delahunt's fingerprints everywhere. First, President John F. Kennedy in creating the Cape Cod National Seashore. In non-election years, that is my family flavor. And you know, thinking about President Kennedy, even my birthday, October 4th, 1957, my uh, older brother, who has been and continues to be a big fan of the space program, the space program that was launched when Senator Kennedy challenged us with putting a man on the moon, he remembers my birthday, not because it's my birthday, but because it's the day that Sputnik was launched. <laughs> connection there as well, the space program and, uh, and the space race, and uh, hopefully not my being a space shot. <laughs> but as you go down the Cape Cod National Seashore, and Phil, I remember very well the day, I believe we had a, an event, Senator, and you came and campaigned for me in 2006. We were at Bayside Betsy's that day. And what a wonderful and humbling experience that was to have both of you there busy, busy men with, you know, issues of national and international import to worry about. And here you are coming here for Sarah Peak. I mean, I truly still stand in awe and great thanks for that and all you've done 
But later that day, we went down to uh, a little bridge off of uh, Jaquesset Neck, and that's when the seeds were laid and the money started to flow for the estuary project in Wellfleet to open up the bed. My legislative aide, Dottie Smith, and I had the opportunity just before Thanksgiving this past year to paddle the Herring River from Route 6 all the way down to where that culvert is to see how that project will be built out. And we have Bill uh, Delahunt and Ted Kennedy to thank for that. It's not done yet, but that's why we need to make sure that this bill gets elected. You know, this is a challenging year. Even in my relatively short life in electoral politics, I will tell you that the mood out there, even here on the Outer and Lower Cape, is like a mood that I have not encountered before. There's a level of anger, there's a level of frustration, and we are battling what I call a culture of campaigning by sound bites. <laughs> Saying things that sound good, but never getting around to the uh, actual, you know, we're going to cut the budget. How are we going to cut the budget? Are we going to have more people homeless on the streets of Hyannis? Are we not going to fund programs like the Estuary Project in Wellfleet? Are we not going to have money for dredging the harbor in Chatham? All of these things, every single dollar we spend has a face on it. It has a, a, a project associated with it. And it's easy to govern or to run by soundbite, but you know what? You can't govern by soundbite. So what I'm offering and what I'm saying to people and what I would ask you to go out as my surrogates to say to people is that regardless of whether somebody's a Democrat or a Republican, what I see as my mission and my obligation as your elected official and your representative is to get up every morning and fight for you, to go out and to be with you, to be at Boy Scout Eagle Court Awards, to be at Girl Scout Civil, uh, Silver and uh, Gold Award ceremonies, to go to the senior citizen centers, to march in those parades, to meet with the people who are addressing the homelessness issues here on the, on the Cape and Islands to be at those various places, to listen and to learn, and to learn in depth about the issues, to be a strong fighter, a good fighter, and a steadfast fighter for all of you. And you are. You know, first and foremost fights take place right here on the Cape. For example, the battle with NSTAR to stop their yes. spraying of potentially harmful herbicides in their right of way that could affect our groundwater. Sometimes those fights and battles take place far from the borders of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, down in Alexandria, Virginia, where I sit on the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, and I fought and won a fight and a battle to make sure that these fishermen out here, these lobstermen, did not unfairly have the regulations under which they fish change. If that had happened, they would have lost thousands of dollars in revenue. Many of them would have gone out of business. And by the way, it's not just these guys. Go down to the Nauset Inlet and down to Chatham. All of their livelihoods were affected by that. So we fought that fight in Virginia because it makes a difference here in Provincetown and Orleans and Chatham and in Harwich as well. And then... And then sometimes the fights and the battles and the discussions and the arguments happen in Boston. For example, fighting to amend the education reform bill so that regional school transportation is insulated and not as um, uh, prone to mid-year budget cuts anymore. Fighting to make sure that the Alzheimer services of Cape Cod and the islands is included in the silver alert bill, which it is fighting to make our anti-bullying bill stronger than the draft that came out of the committee in the House Ways and Means Committee. You know how important that is. Um, you know, the, the tragic death 
actually two deaths recently, a student at Rutgers and then at Johnson and Wales more recently, as a result of uh, really hate crimes being perpetrated against them and bullying and the cyber bullying. You know, when I was a kid, if somebody was mean to me, I have two older brothers, one of them would better talk to the kid and I would take care of it. But uh, guess what? Now you're bullied on your cell phone, you're bullied on your laptop, you're bullied on Facebook, you're bullied all over the place and there's just no escape from it. So uh, we in Massachusetts paid attention to that, stepped in, and we have one of the strongest in the yes. nation bills. One of the things I want to do, and one of the reasons I'm running for re-election, is I think we have to look at expanding that bill to include our state colleges and universities and not stop those programs at the high school level. And there's more to be done on the NSTAR issue as well. There's more to be done with homeowners insurance reform. I'm working with Paula Ashatino. We have a great three-point plan of, of what to do. I won't go into the details now, but boy, you know, we're loaded and ready for bear and ready to go. And every session that I'm in that legislature, I get a little smarter and a little wiser about how to maybe change the name on a bill or how to pick it apart into different pieces or how to see if it gets to a different committee so that it won't die. And we need to do that with homeowners insurance reform. We, I also need to be there because some of you may have seen I hosted a, um, a uh, meeting in Harwich just three days ago talking about the changes we made to help bring the ever escalating costs of health insurance for small businesses under control. We've taken some very good and positive steps but there are other cost driving factors that we haven't gotten to yet. I want to be there. I want to have a seat at the table. I want all of us to have a seat at the table to make sure that that happens and that's one of the other reasons that I'm running for re-election. You will. You know, I'm pretty jazzed up and excited about the tourism economy and arts and culture also. I don't want people to uh, forget about that. Lynn and I just bought our opera tickets for Wealthy Harbor Actors. That's, 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 uh, up to us. But to be effective, you know, I have had great partners in government. Senator Kennedy, Senator Kerry, yes. Congressman Delahunt, Senator O'Leary, my colleagues in the Cape delegation, save one. Save one. Uh, <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that, you know, um, it's, possible, it's possible to work across the aisle and I pride myself on my ability to work across the aisle. For example, uh, something that's a benefit to us in our in the Fourth Barnes School District, we worked so that, it may seem like a little thing, but it's an economic development piece, we worked so that uh, restaurants could start serving, could open their bar beginning at 10 a.m. as opposed to noon. Most are open for brunch at 10. It's a little piece of an economic development bill, and that was a bipartisan effort, myself and my Republican colleagues who were involved in that. So I'm not afraid to reach across the aisle. You know, whatever it takes to get the job done and how you build coalitions, and thankfully we are able to still do that in the State House.